Hi guys, this is Crafty Cat. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. So you guys, um, this is World Watercolor Month, July 2024, and I have finished the first seven days of prompts. That's the first week. So this has been a crazy week. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm really happy that I was able to get this done. I am using, well, I did use my Artistro watercolor pad. There's 30 sheets in here. Um, I really love this paper, which is great because it came in a pack of three. And it's nice, thick watercolor paper. And so for World Watercolor Month, it's done by Doodle Wash. You can check that out at um, worldwatercolormonth.com. Anyway, they give you a different prompt every day, and what they're trying to do is to get people to do art in watercolor, any kind of watercolor medium, or gouache, every single day for the month of July. And they give you a different prompt every day. You don't have to do the prompts. That's just to help you if you want some inspiration. I like to try to do the prompts, so that's what I did. So anyway, I always leave the first page blank because it stresses me out to do the first page in a sketchbook. But later on, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to write World Watercolor Month. 2024 on here and probably do to wash all right so let's flip over to the first one so the first prompt was pattern for day one you can see right here it's pattern and um, I decided I wanted to do a shell now, I don't have any shells like I do have shells in the garage with all of my house stuff from before I moved I don't know where they are so I went online and I found this beautiful tutorial by the frugal crafter um, Lindsay is her name. So her tutorial is called How to Paint a Simple Seashell. So I followed it and this is what I got and I'm really happy. So that was for day one and I used my Derwent Graffitint paint pens for the first time and I love them. I don't know if you can see the shimmer. Can you see the shimmer? I don't know if it's picking it up. But these paints have a shimmer and a shine which is absolutely perfect to the shell. And they have really natural colors, and I, I love it so much. And I'm super happy. Now, I did my shell a little, just a teeny, teeny bit differently than Lindsay. All I did was I, I wanted one more bump on the top. So if you follow the tutorial, there will be two bumps. And I just added a third little bump because I have shells that have the third bump. I don't know if it's that kind of a shell, but I just wanted to add one more bump. But the tutorial is awesome. Lindsay is an excellent, excellent teacher. So I'm super, super happy with how this turned out. And you will notice that I do much better when I'm following a tutorial than when I do something on my own. So this is my tutorial, uh, my skill at following a tutorial, not something I did on my own. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's just beautiful. So then for day two, it's hard to just turn one page. Oh, okay. I see what I did. I, I went on the backs. <laughs> so the, for day two, the um, the word, the prompt was rush. So I thought of bulrushes, a.k.a. cattails, and I found a tutorial called Reflecting... Uh, by ref I think the tutorial is called Watercolor Cattails, and it's by Reflecting Creation Watercolor Studio. It's my first time trying a tutorial by that person. It was very good. And um, what I did was I watched the tutorial, and then I just looked at the final picture, and then I kind of drew similar but not exact. Um, I changed the colors, and I used my Graphitint. My, I used Derwent Inktense paint pans for most of it, and I put a little bit of graf Graphitint at the top, too. So in the tutorial, it was more orange in the middle, but I wanted purple and pink, and then, like, the blue at the bottom. So... Those are my cattails, or my bulrushes. I don't know if they're the same. I think they're the same. When I googled bulrushes, these things came up, so... That is what I did for Rush. And then... For day number three, I went on my own. <laughs> as you can tell. And day number three, the uh, prompt was turn. And when I think of turn, I think of a turntable, a.k.a. a record player. And I tried to, from memory, rec recreate my bedroom from when I was a little girl. I got my first um, Donny Osmond album in 1972. 
by my first white record player in 1972. Now, my my record player wasn't like this. Mine was a suitcase record player. I, I couldn't figure out how to draw it, so I just did this kind of record player. Just imagine it has a top that's standing up behind here. And I, had, I have a little coffee table. I, I used to put my record player on the coffee table, and I had flowers that I would pick. And my first album was my, my Best to You, and I had my whole, all of my walls were full of posters of Donnie and the Osmonds. But just to get the idea, I decided I would draw this big poster of Donnie, and I put him in a purple shirt. And then I just, the name, the Osmonds, in 1972, the pennant. And now, um, my bed, I did have a bed spread like that with, it was green and blue with some yellow. I did have a little, um, bunny rabbit, a little stuffed rabbit on my bed. Mine was pink and white. And I did have a matching pillowcase sham to go with it, but I thought I'd just do the white pillow because I thought it would just be too much pattern if I put that. I'm happy with everything but me. I'm not good at drawing people. I did a better job on my practice drawing for the person than I did for this drawing. I don't know why. When I practice something in my sketchbook, I do better than I do when I, when I do it the second time. Every single time, I don't know why. But anyway, I messed up the hair, but that's okay. It gives you the idea. And her body is much bigger than an eight-year-old. I, I was, was I eight or six? 64 to 74 is Tanya. I was eight years old in 1972. I was six years old when I first fell in love with Johnny Osmond. I had to wait a whole two years to get a record from him. Um, yeah, I think I saw him. Um, I don't know where. I was on TV and on the radio. Anyway, I just... Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out, and this was July the 5th that I did it, even though this was supposed to be done on day three, because my cousin passed away, sadly, and I had a funeral to go to, and I had I missed a few days, so I had to catch up on a lot of days. So anyway, um, I'm happy with how this turned out. I, I did have the green rug. My walls were paneling, but I decided just to do a yellow wall. So I think that's really cute. It's just a little doodle. I love the bright colors of the Derwent paint pans. They're so pretty. Um, yeah. So that was day three. And let me just turn the page for day four. Day four, the prompt was Signal. And I did this with Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolor paints. I love my Cotmans. And I just did this. I looked at a bunch of pictures of lighthouses just to get an idea of what a lighthouse looks like. And then I just did this on my own. I just, I had an idea that I wanted a lighthouse on some rocks overlooking the water with a muted sky in the background. And I, I uh, thought about putting a light because it's signal, right? The signal light. But I thought, no, this is daytime and I think the lights just go on at night. But I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe they go on in the day. And I had a hard time doing the waves. But I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And I, I left the white of the paper for half of the lighthouse and I just shaded part of it in a light gray blue just to show the shady side. This is the sunny side. So you can see the sun's hitting the rocks here. So I'm really happy with how this came out. And for something just out of my brain, without a reference photo, like even though I looked at millions of pictures of lighthouses, I didn't look at any that were just like this. So um, just to get the general shape and idea, you know, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's really simple. And I think I do much better when I try to keep things simple. So that was day four, Windsor and Newton Cotman. Alrighty, so for day five, <laughs> it was patch. So um, the prompt was patch, and I thought of Cabbage Patch Kids. I am not talented enough to draw a Cabbage Patch Kid, but I did find this old logo of the Cabbage Patch Kids, and I changed it a little bit. The logo did not have this top flower and the leaves on it. It had this much better than what I drew and it had the word Cabbage Patch Kids around it and I, I didn't want to play with words so I just added, I added another flower and some more leaves these aren't necessarily cabbage leaves this is the cabbage here we're just pretending there's a flower growing behind it and like a little Cabbage Patch round face growing out it's not fully grown yet it's still growing so that is my my um result for Patch and I used my new Stadler Tinted Watercolor Pencils for this, plus a pink and a yellow watercolor pencil that I just had in my kit. I think they were just from Michael's. 
and I just looked up and see a spider on my ceiling. Oh my god. Spider, stay there. I, I, I don't like spiders. I'm really scared of spiders. Stay there and we'll be good. <laughs> so anyway, I think he just wants to see all my paintings too. So I thought that was cute and I really like the muted colors of the, uh, the tinted watercolor pencils by Sadler. I'm, I'm looking forward to using them again. And this was fun to do. So I just added the yellow and the pink from my other set, like I said. So that was D5. And let's turn the page. Day six, and I forgot to write the date. I did this yesterday on actual day six. And I, I did the, um, the cabbage patch on day six as well because I was trying to catch up from the funeral from missing a few days. So this is a shipwreck out at Gooley Bay on Lake Superior. Last summer while I was at camp, I went kayaking. I, I think I went for like a four hour kayak ride. So this is about an hour and a half by kayak from my camp up the lake past a bunch of the points. There were two shipwrecks. There was this one. And then around another point, there was another shipwreck. But the other one was wooden. And this one was metal and wood. And it had tons and tons of rust. So I thought that would be perfect for the rusty prompt. And um, I used my Derwent Graffitin paint pans again. And I think they work really nicely for this. And um, I have two white gel pens, and I was trying to do the ripples on the water. And the water was really green in the picture because it was re reflecting all of the leaves that were kind of hanging over. And then it, there were white ripples, but I couldn't get the white ripples. You can kind of see them, but not really. So my jelly roll pens do not work at all on top of watercolor. They work on an envelope, but they did not work on top of the watercolor. So I'm happy with how this turned out. You can see all the rocks and all the trees and the muted uh, sky in behind. But I'm, I am really like how the boat turned out. The boat does look like this. I wish I could have got the water, like the gleaming white of the water, but I ordered some new gel pens, so hopefully that will help. But I am very happy with how this came out. I, I love it. And I was so thrilled. Like, this brings back memories of kayaking and coming around the corner and seeing this and going, oh, my gosh, there's a shipwreck. And, and there was, like, the log under, like, under the water. And you can kind of see I tried to paint the rocks under the water. I need a lot of practice for water. But these are the colors that were in the water. The only thing I'm missing are the, the little teeny tiny white ripples. So that was day six, and I did that yesterday. I love it. I'm, I think maybe this is one of my favorite ones. And then day seven was the last day, and that was today. And I did Hermione because the prompt was study. And when I think of study, I think of Hermione studying at Hogwarts. And um, I'm really bad at drawing people, but I love the way she came out. I kind of did her in, like, the chibi style, which is, like, the cute cartoony style. And you could see I couldn't get two eyes the same size. This one's more round and wide, and this one's more narrow, but oh well. Poor Hermione. I need more practice. But I like the way her hair came out, like, and I like the way the book came out. Now, the book should be Hogwarts A History, right? But I thought, well, since this, I'm making it mine, I'm going to do it History of Hogwarts. Although I did put B. Bagshaw as the author, and I tried to draw a little castle on the book. And because it's magic, the book is just floating magically in the air in front of her. And I didn't want to draw her body or anything. I just wanted this just to get the idea. And because I did so many paintings yesterday trying to catch up from missing, I missed three days because of my cousin passing away and we had family staying with us. So yesterday I had to do three paintings in a row. So I was really tired today. So I wanted something quick and simple. And for this one, I used my Secura Koi watercolor set. And I really like that set. It's a lovely set. And I especially like that I got it on sale for $12. And it went back up to 45 right after I got it. So $12 on Amazon.ca was an amazing price. I think there's like 24 colors or 18 colors. It's a really nice set. Hang on and I'll show it to you. I've got it right here. And I've got unboxings on the channel. But I got this for $12 Canadian, you guys. And it's such a lovely set. And that's what I did Hermione with. And it's got this removable tray that you could put anywhere and it comes with a, a brush like a water brush and some extra white and these are all the colors 
There's 24 colors. I couldn't remember if there were 24 or 18. And it's very lightweight, and it's just really nice. I just really like this set for 12 bucks. You can't go wrong, right? But I love my Graphitint sets, too. I love all of them. So anyway, here is Hermione. And here is the shipwreck. And the Cabbage Patch Kid. And the Lighthouse. And me in my 1972 bedroom with Donny Osmond everywhere. And some rushes. And the snail. So let me know in the comments which one you like the best out of the seven of them. I, I love the snail. I love the lighthouse. I love the shipwreck. And, and I think Hermione came out cute too. The only one I, I maybe I really don't care for this one. Like it's pretty. It's I like it, but I don't like the way the cat tails came out. And um I I I wish this would have come out as cute. Like I like it, but I, I really messed up my girl with the hair and the arms, like she had two arms just sticking out. I did so much better in my practice sketch. But I like everything else except for the girl that's meant to be me. <laughs> and I gave myself purple socks just like Donny Osmond. Anyway, yeah, she's so cute, the last one. So what I really like about this is I'm going to hopefully get better every day. But this is just practice. These aren't meant to be, like, works of art or anything. Well, they are art, but they're not meant to be, like, masterpieces. This is just for me to get better at watercolor. And I'm really liking that Secure Koi watercolor. I'm going to try it again. Usually the Cotman's are my, my favorite um, to use. But the Graphitint, I had so much fun using the Graphitint. I, I think the snail came out great. And, and like, look how bright and vibrant the Derwin Ink Tents uh, paint pans are. Yeah, I, I like them all. I love all my watercolors. And I have a really good set that I won last year when I was doing World Watercolor Month. It is um, Rembrandt. It's Rembrandt, so they're super expensive, so I don't use them very often because I don't feel like I have the talent to use such expensive paints. Do you know what I mean? But I will use them a few times during World Watercolor Month. All right, so that is it for week one is done. I hope you like that. Um, may as well end it up on, on a page, right? If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe. Hit the notification bell. All of those good things that help me as a channel. Let me know which painting was your favorite. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And if you're interested in doing World Watercolor Month, um, go over to the website, worldwatercolormonth.com, and you can look at all of the prompts. And you don't have to do the whole month. You could start today if you want. I, I did three or four yesterday, so it is possible to catch up. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Take care. Stay safe. And happy painting. Bye, guys.